Hello, my name is Josh and I just spent the last 10 weeks preparing for my UCAT exam. And I did that exam just two days ago and I got a score of 2860 and I got band 1 in the situational judgement. So in this video I'm going to be talking a bit about the tips and advice that and the lessons that I've learned during my preparation and I want to give this advice to anyone who's going to sit their UK exam um, and in this video I'm going to be splitting this into three sections first I'm just going to give a general overview of the UK exam then I'm going to talk a little bit more about each section give a few tips and advice for those and then I'm going to talk about how I prepared what materials are used and how long you should be preparing for in like advance to the exam so like how many weeks before the exam okay so an overview of the UCAT so it's an entrance exam for medicine or dentistry at university so it's a two hour exam you usually sit it at a driving test center, similar place to that and you, it's all computer based every question is a multiple choice question and there are five sections the first is verbal reasoning next is decision making then quantitative reasoning then abstract reasoning and the final is situational judgment so the first four sections are scored from 300 minimum to 900 maximum and the final section situational judgment is scored from band 1 to 4 with band 1 being the maximum score that you can get so at the end of the exam you'll be given your score as a number first out of 3600 as a total of each from the first four sections then you'll be given a band for your situational judgment so I got 2860 for the number part and bad one for the situation judgment part and I think this is around the 90th percentile when compared to um, all the other scores and different universities will take this score different ways so some people will uh, some universities rank all the applicants based on their UCAT scores and will select the top applicants and some will have a cutoff so everyone above a certain number of 2700 for example will be called in for an interview um, so now I'll talk a little bit about each section uh, so first verbal reasoning so verbal reasoning, you'll be given a passage and a question based on the passage that you have to answer. Now my first tip is that you don't read the passage first. It's not a very long passage, maybe three to four paragraphs long. So don't spend too much time reading it because you only have 21 minutes to answer 44 questions. So it's very time pressured. Instead, read the question first and look for what the question is answer, uh, asking for and then scan for that answer in the, in the passage so what usually tends to happen is that the first question will be about uh, the answer for the first question will be in the first part of the passage and the second question the answers for the second question will be later on and so on and so on and this, these questions will be either uh, multiple choice out of four or a true false can't tell question so you only have three options and what is usually the case is that these true false questions are a lot easier than the multiple choice out of four so what I did was because 99% of the time you don't have time to answer all these verbal reasoning questions so I found what improved my score a lot was skipping out some of the 
four multiple choice questions, so the, the ones where you've got four options, and making sure that I answer all the true false questions, um, because those are ones, those are the ones which are easier, and the ones which are more likely to get right. So skip instead of just answering the questions as they come along in the order. I would make sure to go through, answer all the true, false, I can't tell questions first, and that improved my score uh, quite dramatically. Um, so the next section, decision making. So this is more like some, some think. It makes you think logically about different situations. So different logical puzzles or. You have to read a text and draw conclusions from that logically whether a statement is true or false or there will be some basic stuff like very simple Venn diagrams or probability questions or comparing, uh, making comparisons of different things. From this uh, there's 29 questions which you have to answer in 31 minutes. Um, what I found really useful was that the logical puzzle questions is like the wordy questions where you you given a a lot of information about something which is tend to be about a group of friends maybe buying something at different prices and you have to work out which statement is true or false or something uh, something like that and these questions tend to take a lot more time than the other questions such as like probability of choosing an argument. So what I did was leave these questions towards the end because if I try to answer all these questions first I'm not leaving myself enough time to answer the easier questions at the end. So I skipped out these questions and just guessed an answer, went through, answered the questions at the end and at the end came back and answered the logical reasoning. Um, when choosing the arguments in decision making you'll be given a statement and then there's four arguments that you have to choose from and which is the strongest one. What I found was that you have to choose the argument which is talk which talks about all the points asked in the statement. Because um, sometimes the arguments won't uh, won't be to do with the statement at all. So just make sure to do that. Uh, next question, uh, next section is um, quantitative reasoning. This is very basic math skills section. So the questions are pretty basic. It might be about taking percentages or taking means or interpreting data from a uh, graph or tables. But the main problem is trying to get all the questions done in the time. So you get 36 questions to do in 24 minutes. And what I found really improved my score was using the on-screen calculator. So using the, sorry, everyone has to use the on-screen calculator. What I found improved my score was using the number pad on my keyboard. So instead of using your mouse, make sure to use a number pad because that is like almost as quick as not using a normal calculator which will make you spend less time on each section and be able to answer more questions pretty much and that improved my score a lot and I would highly recommend doing that and if you're preparing a laptop make sure to buy like a keyboard attachment so that you've got a number pad <coughs> And I'd also say there are some questions which you know that are going to take a lot of time in quantitative reasoning. So I would just guess an answer and move on and do the easier ones. Because all the questions are worth the same amount of points. So, so make sure that you do the easy ones first. Um, for abstract reasoning, I would say just do a lot a lot of practice because at first you'll do it and you won't see the pattern straight away but after a lot of practice on like Medify or something 
you will start to see the patterns and you'll get quicker at noticing these patterns. And what I found helps is that once you've done a set of questions, go back over them, see where you went wrong and look at what the pattern was for that. And the next time if a similar pattern comes up, you're more likely to notice that pattern. Um, for questions where you simply can't see the pattern at all, no matter how hard you try, don't waste your time trying to guess what the pattern is or trying to figure it out because you need to save this time to answer other questions because you only have 13 minutes to answer 55 questions. So what I would highly recommend is if you don't know the pattern, select option A or set A for each one because this way you usually get around two questions right out of the set of five questions which is better than nothing and which usually is better than guessing what the question what the answers would be so if you guessed you'd probably get less than if you just put A for everything that's just the play it safe kind of card so for the situational judgment test you'll get given 69 questions to do in 26 minutes and for this section I found that mainly doing lots of practice makes you makes you better since there are lots of similar scenarios where you know whether the response is uh, which option so it's the format is you get given a scenario as a medical scenario and you get given a response to that scenario and you have to decide whether that response is very appropriate, appropriate, inappropriate but not awful or very inappropriate or you get given a response and you're told whether this is a very important consideration or important, minor importance or this is of no importance, of, no importance at all so this is like you shouldn't always just go on your instinct but more of like what do they want me to say and some people also say that you should read the general medical council um, good medical practice because that's the advice which is given to all doctors registered by the general medical council and it's what the situational judgment is based upon but I didn't I didn't read that and I still got band one but I recommend reading that if you are struggling um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about my preparation so how long did I prepare for and what materials did I use so I would recommend you prepare for 10 weeks before your exam date this is like at least two months before your exam I did 10 weeks and I found that this was enough for me and by the end of the 10 weeks I've really felt confident in each section that I've done enough questions in it and I, had, at the end of the 10 weeks I had done over 13,000 DUCAT questions and the two websites which I used to do these questions was Medify and the UCAT website, the UCAT official website. Um, so for Medify, I would recommend um, getting the two or three month option, which costs around 60 to 75 pounds. But I would highly recommend Medify because I found it very useful because it's got a ton of practice questions and you can do these practice questions and go over it and see where you've gone wrong and it gives an explanation for each uh, each question you can see where you've gone wrong and you can learn from your past questions so you improve over time and I found that when you do your questions in Medify you should write down your scores so I wrote down my percentages every time I did a practice test or just some a mock test in Medify and I plotted, plotted these results in a graph 
on Excel and you can see over time you'll get better, get worse, but the overall trend is that you'll get better over time. And this doesn't happen instantly, but it happens over a long period of time um, and over lots of work, lots of thousands of questions and lots of reviewing and you may need to watch a few other videos to see to help in areas where you're struggling in and I would really recommend Medify, it's worth the money it's a lot of money but when you think about how important the UCAT exam is the, in the bigger scheme of things uh, the money is worth it um, so I did questions on there that's got 21 mock tests which I found which was quite similar to the real thing and I also did some questions in the question banks on the official UCAT website and I did the official UCAT mocks and I found those to be even more similar to the real thing so I'd recommend saving those official um, for UCAT mocks